Hey, it's Owen from Enmore Audio, and this week we're going to be looking at the Full Tone Tube Tape Echo Unit. It's a unit that's heavily inspired by the Maestro Echoplex EP2. The Maestro Echoplex is one of the earliest tape delay units. It came out about 1961, before that people had been experimenting with tape, and this was it finally in a unit. You might recognize the word maestro from when we were talking about fuzz pedals a couple of weeks back. They made one of the very first fuzz units and also one of the first commercially available tape echoes. The early Echoplex units became known not just for their delay, but for their tube preamps. People were really liking the sound of their guitars or other instruments driven through the tube preamps. The later solid state Echoplex units have their fans, but today we're focusing on the tube units. Full Tone, the company, came out with this in about 2004. And as you can see, they're heavily inspired by the Tube Echoplex. Around this era, there wasn't really any other tape units being built by anybody. They were either chip-based or digital. And anything you wanted that was tape delay based, you had to use an older unit that had been restored or fixed up by someone to work in the studio. Let's take a quick look over the unit and see what the features are. We've got a whole lot of stuff that's upgraded from the original Echoplex, considering that the Echoplex only has one volume and echo speed and a number of repeats, and that's it on the front. We've got true bypass, stereo, including three different modes, one which is mono, one which has the echo on one side, the mono signal on the other with them kind of blended together, and the last which is echo all on one side, and original signal all on the other. I'm gonna focus on the second setting so it'll sound extra cool in headphones, but I'll have a bit of a play around with it too. There's two stereo output jacks, and this lever here engages the pinch roller to get the tape moving. You can also attach a pedal to cancel the echoes, which can have a pretty great effect when letting them build up on tape. I'm gonna actually use my hand on the pinch roller physically so you get something to look at on the camera. We've got an input volume and echo volume and a number of echo repeats from single slap to infinite feedback. And here's a couple of extra little functions. We've got control over the record level to tape, so we can really hit the tape hard if we want gritty compressed delays. And echo tone here is a tone control on our wet signal. If you turn it way down, it kind of sounds more like your old dull echoplex, and up is more like the signal that you have put into it. Let's pop the cover off so you can see the moving parts. Here's the tape cartridge that the company have been making from new. And finally up the top here, we've got a couple other things. We've got the echo head that you move by hand to adjust the echo speed, which is a function of the original Echoplex. Move it to the left, you get a fast slap back, and to the right, you get a much longer delay. Couple that with this speed control over here that did not appear in the original. You'll notice at low speed, you get quite a gritty lo-fi sound coming back off the tape at you. And now I'm going to demonstrate this thing over guitar and drums. We all know what a tape echo sounds like, so I'm really going to mess with it and see what kind of cool sounds I can get out of it.
And there we have it, a tour through the full tone tube tape echo. It's a very versatile unit and you can use it not just as something plugged into your guitar, but as an outboard piece of equipment for your mixes that are in the computer. Now they're still in production and they're getting quite expensive. They're at two and a half to three K at the moment new, but comparatively you'd pay that or more for an original Echoplex. And this is a bit more modern and reliable. It's basically the same kind of unit, but with modern features. On top of that, there's not a huge world of new production tape delays out there. We got this one, we got the fairly new T-Rex replicator, which I haven't got my hands on just yet, maybe soon. And we got the Echofix EFX2, which happens to be an Australian company. So check them out. So should I grab a real tape echo or use a plugin? I reckon the physical unit can't be beat for some of the weird inconsistencies that make it so special when you're working with audio. Plus the tactility of a physical unit is hard to match when you're playing with plugins. And finally, while plugins are getting very close, nothing has seemed to match a real tape echo just yet. The inconsistencies and the organic grainy sound you get from these seem to really hark back to the days of the 60s and 70s, which is something that really appeals to me. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll catch you next week for more studio stuff.